Hi everyone and thanks for joining me this week. This video is going to be about how many hexagons are needed for a quilt. Now that's sort of like how long is a piece of string. It depends on what size hexagons you're using and what size quilt you're planning on making. Going by my own experience, I'll run through the quilts that I've made and how many hexagons they've taken. I don't remember exactly the very first quilt I did, which was this one coming up. This is what I call my seaside quilt. This one was made with one inch hexagons and I think there was roughly a thousand. I didn't cover them all in advance. I covered them as I needed them for each of the basically large flowers. So it was a learning curve and uh, counting hexagons wasn't what I was doing. I counted the ones I needed for each specific um, flower because each round of the flower has a different theme. I mean, they're all the same things within the quilt, but the centre is different from the 6, from the 12, from the 18. And obviously the yellow that went round them. And the border being two different size squares, I didn't count them at all. But that quilt, put on a queen size bed, it covers the bed, but it doesn't come down the sides. So if you wanted to make that into a quilt that would fit a bed, I would say it would fit a single bed, or in America I think you call them twin beds, but it will not fit a, a double bed or a queen size bed. The next quilt I made was, I went down in size, this was three quarter inch hexagons, and this quilt I made for my friend's mother. And this one I know took 5,000 hexagons. That's 5,000 three quarter inch hexagons. Now this was what she wanted it made as a bedspread not to actually use when sleeping. It does come down further on one side of the bed than the other. It should have been maybe another diamond width wide. But she was happy with it. It's still sitting on the bed, the spare bed in their house. So... Yeah, that was, I don't know, eight years ago or so that I made that. So that was 5,000 hexagons. Now this next quilt was my first go at half inch hexagons. This is my, I call it my big turquoise quilt. Now this one took over 14,000 hexagons, I think maybe 14,500. It is a queen size quilt. It's, I don't know the exact measurements because it's in a tub, but it, it fits a queen size bed. It would be probably a little bit large for a double bed, but it does fit a queen size bed. So that was 14, 14,000 something. I don't still have the card that I kept the tally on. But 14,000 and that's half inch hexagons and all my future quilts are half inch hexagons. The next quilt is my turquoise diamond quilt, which I'll put up a picture of. Now this one was 10,000 hexagons and it's basically two meters square or near enough. Um, not queen size, once again, not double bed size either, it's probably, it'd fit a, a, um, I don't know if you have them in America, or the, you know, a king single or a three quarter bed, but it wasn't, I didn't design it for going on a bed, so I wasn't looking at those dimensions. So that was like 10,000 hexagons. Once again, I did not plan for it to be that many. It's just that's what it ended up being. It was originally going to be a throw rug, 
but I changed it to being a basically a wall hanging to go with the previous big turquoise quilt that is was made for a bed. The final big quilt, well actually it isn't the final big quilt, this one which is the La Passion If you go to the Facebook page for this this quilt, which is Hexagon Quilt La Passion, you will see lots of different versions of it, colours of it, very little variation in the design. I did change mine because I ran out of dark green, but you know, it was only negligible the difference. Mine came in at six thousand eight hundred sorry, sixteen thousand eight hundred hexagons. The original plan, I think, says it's 17,000 something, but I, there's no way I've got two or 300 hexagon papers still in that quilt, so maybe another round round the outside would bring it up closer to, well, would bring it over the 17,000. Now, this one is basically a king-size quilt. It's a large king-size quilt. It's 2.7 metres by 2.9 and I know that because I'm looking at actually quilting it sometime in the foreseeable future. It, um, you know, people have asked on, on the group, you know, how many of each colour. I kept track of how many hexagons I was using initially until I made a major mistake and then I didn't bother. But... Yeah, you know, basically a quilt that size. You're talking 24 metres of fabric at least. Yeah, you know, it, it weighs a ton, which 24 metres of fabric would weigh a lot. It um, It's something that people don't tend to think about is I look at the number of hexagons, I don't look at the weight, and I also don't really look at the meterage. My underwater quilt that you've all seen pictures of, the one that's finished, which um, is too big for me to actually quilt at the moment. It uh, it took 14,950 hexagons, which means it is a queen size quilt, but I think it's not square enough for that. But I'll have to dig it out and actually measure it at some point but it's not on my list of quilts to be quilted anytime soon the La Passion is higher on the list than that one my current underwater quilt of which this is one of the blocks is going to be 10,000 10, hexagons and it will be yeah, 2.2 .2 metres square, something like that, or 2 metres, or something. Either way, it's big enough that I can use a single wide width batting and wide width batting as well to when I come to quilt it. This will get quilted probably next. I haven't finished it yet. It's still got... After this one, I will have 19 blocks left to do. So it's it's getting there, considering it's 100 and... No, it's 88 blocks in total. So the first underwater quilt was 100 and... 130 blocks. So a lot of hexagons. But... This one will take 10,200. The next one, the next quilt, which was going to be another geometric one with the charcoal grey, I have changed my mind. It's going to be the third underwater quilt and it is going to literally just be fish. Seawater and fish, maybe a line of sand at the bottom and no sky. Which leaves me with the problem of when I say how many hexagons it's also how many of each colour this container has got 1500, 2000 probably not 2000 quite 
1500 to 1800 hexagons that are for the sky for this quilt. And originally the, the third quilt was going to have the Titanic on it, so it was going to have sky and icebergs. But I'm just going to do fish. I'm going to do two rows going one direction to the other and alternate it. So there'll be eight rows of fish with the border. Same border as this one, which is the dark blue or the royal blue. But with quilts, and you get a bit carried away sometimes, I've got all these pale blue it's almost like a splotchy watermark pattern on them pale blue hexagons that are I don't know that I will ever have any use for them not for all of them but that's just the nature of it I've covered four and a half thousand hexagons for my geometric quilt that has the charcoal grey they're in two containers like these blue ones were and they might not get used for years if ever because the next underwater quilt is what I will do next and I've already picked out the background fabric for the sea whereas this one's got this nice blue it's an absolute pig to cover with because they keep coming undone um, the previous blue I had the same sort of problem so I'm going to use the cheap option which is the homespun which I've spoken about before which is the same colour both sides it um, comes in you know probably 50 different colours you know from what I've got sitting here I've got you know it's like a skin colour that's homespun that red is homespun I've got leftover turquoise this whole turquoise quilts were homespun so it's a very very um i think it's a good good fabric to make things with unfortunately it does not have any pattern to it but it also doesn't have a different front and back which makes it very easy when it comes to sewing binding together or even just cutting the hexagons you don't have to make sure you they're all facing the right way so there'll be more down the track on this when I get the fabric and everything. I'll probably do a video on the fabric for this next underwater quilt. I've already got the backing and binding for this one. The batting or wadding, whatever you want to call it, for this one it will be coming in the same order as the fabric for the C for the next one. So I'm going to get six metres of fabric. That'll do well over 4,000 hexagons. I think I got four and a half thousand out of the six meters of the charcoal gray, but I think they gave me a bit extra fabric because as far as fabric goes, and I'm only talking half inch hexagons, a quarter, be it a fat quarter or a normal straight cut quarter, will give me 182 hexagons. So that, if we're talking 182, that works out to be one of my little containers. Not full, but full to the lip on the edge. So my aim is I've got quite a few of these to still cover with the hexagons from the fabric I got the other week. I've got um, yeah, masses of... You know, like that's 182 little squares of fabric, inch and a half squares waiting to go on a hexi on hexagons. So I've got more than enough to keep me busy, which is why this block might take a while. But as far as how many of each each colour you need for whatever quilt, unfortunately, that's something you have to work out as you go along, unless you know exactly like for the sky for this is two rows plus four down into the next row so that's sorry two two rows of blocks so that's 22 blocks well 20 blocks is going to be i don't know 
two and a half thousand call it so I know that that's roughly what the sky is I've already done half the sky so I know that that's more than enough hexagons in this container to last the quilt so yeah it's work it out as you go along unfortunately unless you have a specific quilt a specific design possibly one you've done yourself and you can work out how many hexagons but keep in mind if I wanted to do my fish hexagons in three quarter inch hexagons it would be too big to even fit on a wall you know I've started making my what is my big turquoise quilt that I showed with the pale blue border I started doing that in three quarter inch hexagons and I could only go not even a quarter of it to get to a um, throw rug size which brings me to the last quilt I wanted to mention and that is this one this is the one I recently made for my friend this I think took 4,000 hexagons I do somewhere have the bit of paper that says how many but it was roughly 4,000 hexagons I'd planned on it being a queen size quilt for us so I have got masses of white and pink hexagons left over as well as masses of flowers so they will all get incorporated into future quilts maybe not all the white ones but they will that um, charcoal grey may well have pink hot pink as borders but I will have to see how that one goes but basically how many hexagons is down to the size of the hexagons and the size of the quilt that you want keep in mind that if you want to do intricate things like I wanted to do with my underwater quilts even half inch hexagons are too big to give the really finite details quarter inch hexagons you can get a lot more detail I'm not even considering those but half inch hexagons I can fit the fish I can fit a couple two or three fish per block I'm happy with that I can do a seahorse I can do lots of things now if I did if I did this quilt in one inch hexagons it would be probably only 20 or 30 fish turtles seahorses maybe one shark or one dolphin because when you're talking that size you know to go from 10,000 hexagon quilt down to 1,000 that's a huge reduction in the number of features you can fit into a quilt so just a few things to keep in mind I will keep sewing and covering hexagons and I will see you on the next one and thanks for watching